No matter how thorough, an informational video is never an adequate replacement for your factory-supplied owner's manual. Please consult and carefully read your Wyndham Weaponry Owner's Manual prior to operating the firearm. As is the case working on any firearm, remove the magazine, clear the weapon itself, and ensure that you're working with a cold firearm. Using the included multi-tool, push the pivot pin and takedown pin outward for ease in removing them. Of course it can be done without the tool, but it makes it easier. Then remove the bolt carrier assembly and set it aside. In this case, we started with the 5.56 configuration. Then turn your upper upside down, exposing the retaining block and the safety bail. You'll need to remove the safety bail, which allows the retaining block to slide forward, releasing the barrel. However, in its new out-of-the-box condition, the safety bail is very difficult to release, as it should be, since it holds the retaining block in place. This again is where the multi-tool is very helpful. You simply get the multi-tool, pry it up against one corner of the safety bail, and it will pry right off. This will release the retaining block, which allows you to turn the barrel locking arms outward, which essentially releases the barrel, which now allows the barrel to be easily removed from the upper. Keep in mind that if the barrel locking arms are not completely outward, the barrel will not release. Since we're going to be converting to 762 by 39 we grab our 762 by 39 barrel, which is adequately marked. The benefit of having a gas tube is that you also have a gas tube hole at the back of the receiver, which helps in indexing the whole barrel into the receiver itself. Remember, this whole process is effortless, so if you feel the need to force anything, something is not right. Now the barrel locking arms will easily close, allowing the retaining block to slide rearward and then the safety belt to be closed, locking the whole thing in place. Now real quick, when you're indexing your 9mm barrel, remember it does not have a gas tube, so you don't have an index point to aim at as far as the hole in the back of the receiver. Best thing to do is seat the barrel the first time you get a chance to put this thing together, then I take a sharpie and I mark a mark on my barrel, and then I took the same sharpie and marked a mark where the barrel lined up with the side of the receiver so that I could line these two points up and aim at one another when indexing this nine millimeter barrel to get it in there quicker since I did not again have the gas tube to help me aim into the system itself. Another quick tip, be aware of where your sling attachment is when reassembling the firearm. You'll notice that this thing can get turned and in the way when you're trying to index the barrel into the receiver and it's not gonna allow the barrel to seat properly into the back of the upper. And as stated earlier, if you find yourself feeling like you need to force something, something is not right. These barrel locking arms are critical in removing and inserting a barrel into the receiver. If they are not folded rearward, it is not going to let go of the barrel and it's also not going to receive a new barrel until these arms again are folded rearward. Now let's move on to the lower and changing out the mag wells. Using your multi-tool, release the trigger guard pin, which removes the trigger guard from the mag well that you're going to be replacing. Now press the mag release of your 5.56 mag well, which releases it from the lower. Now with the mag well of the corresponding caliber that you're converting the rifle to, make sure you line up the rail of the mag well with the rail of the lower, press the mag release, and it slides right in place. Now close the trigger guard, lock the trigger guard pin, and everything is ready to roll. It's important that you familiarize yourself with the caliber you're going to use and the corresponding components. Notice each magwell only works with its corresponding magazine. One very important point in keeping your Wyndham MCS in good working condition is to not dry fire this thing when the lower is not attached to the upper. Notice here, at the top is your standard Wyndham weaponry lower. At the bottom is the MCS lower. In order for the magwell to be able to be removed from the lower, these two components, which are now separate, used to be one and they shared that same wall. Now each one of them has their own separate wall, which means both of them are a lot thinner. A hammer coming forward from being dry fired could very easily damage this wall. Let's install our new bolt carrier assembly, the one for the 7.62x39 as AK stamped to the rear of it. This is a symbol as putting the bolt carrier group in the charging handle and sliding it forward as always. Almost done. All we have to do now is attach the lower to the upper and then this rifle is good to go, being transformed from 5.56 to 7.62x39 in a matter of minutes. Hey, I'm Max Michelle, and I'm on Gun District. Why aren't you?